Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and glory to the Most High and His Son. Yahweh, Ma'ashem, Yahushai, Ma'ashem, Rakak, Wadash. And double honors to the apostles of the great millstone that have taught me to through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and including the bishops on down, and um, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai broke a thumb to the 140 and 4,000, and including the one third. And once again, you know, we want to give thanks to the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, for giving us this truth and this understanding through the men that were sent before us. All right, and um, what I want to get into is this over here in regards to this so-called uh, biblical expert which happens to be of the elk of Amalek this is what he says so long eclipse to mark the beginning of judgment upon America um, April's total darkness will be a unique powerful sign from the most high says author pastor an unusual total solar eclipse that will traverse North America in April has some biblical experts pointing to a deeper significance of the event, especially in light of today's extremely unsettled times. With a deep understanding of classical uh, Jewish and Christian sources, past the mark, built of El Shaddai Ministries is sharing his insight into the up and coming solar eclipse that will take place on Monday, the 8th of April, which will take place after the Pesach. And, um, you know, first and foremost, what I'm going to say is, is this, is that, you know, I could be right, but then I could be wrong. I believe, you know, a lot of these so-called um, pastors that claim to be, you know, men of, of God that that, are, that have a congregation inside these buildings that they call churches, and as well as these scholars, you know, in the, in the scriptures. And some of them, you know, do have some kind of right to what they're saying but um i believe nowadays they're listening into what we're saying too you know and and you know that's something that i personally believe because this israelite thing is becoming um you know global you know it's becoming something that the world is beginning to see and and, and having to accept now with with what we're saying and agree to it because when the so-called Negro speaks in regards to the Bible, you know, it's coming from a sincere, a sincere place of the truth, you know. Now, am I saying all of the time? No, because even among us, you have liars that, that will uh, spin the Bible to their own way for their own benefit, for whatever that benefit is. But the truth is, is that um, what we're saying is becoming more and more um, sure, you know, to the side of, of those that are, that are looking in from the outside looking in, I'm saying, you know, and I think these scholars are beginning to realize that what we're saying is, is, in, is in fact true. But let's just say that this guy isn't heard what we have said at all. You know, what he's saying, it, it, it's correct because what we can do, we can back it up with the scriptures which is in the book of Luke 20, what is it? We'll begin by reading verse 25 here. As this reads, And there shall be a sign in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth the stress of nations, with perplexity in the seas and the waves roaring. So we know that um, this is already happening in, in this time that we're now living in. It speaks for itself. I mean, when we at times look around, the world and we see what's going on among the people we, we we you know we see the distress of nations like right now um and i believe in Athens, greece you have um you know a bunch of farmers getting together protesting and as well as they have been doing so in germany too all right so there's protesting is going on and if that's not going on there's tornadoes that's going around and affecting people in diverse places and we're seeing the signs in the sun and as well as even in the moon you know, we're getting blood moons and as well as we're getting them, them um, solar eclipses. Okay. And um, 
as we will continue to read on in verse 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And this is what we look, look up to. Okay, the power which is on high whom we serve for the sake of our own lives. Salvation. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption drawer of night. You know, so when we see these things happening, it's very clear that the Lord is on his way. And, and again, as I'm going to say, this is who we who we give thanks to. And, uh, you know, this is who we serve. Because as we are supposed to, as Israelites, that is the heritage of us is, is to, you know, give praises unto the Heavenly Father and keeping his ways, his righteousness. All right. And in these things. Shall we live evermore? Okay, as Yahweh Shai promised us, uh, eternal life. So our Redeemer is soon to come. And um, this guy is absolutely correct. Whether he got it from us or not, he's absolutely right. When you start to see these strange wonders and signs, it's definitely a sign of destruction which is bound to come. And the great destruction that we've, what we've always been speaking about will take place on the soils of America. Okay? That's what it's going to be. Jeremiah 50 and verse 34. And their redeemer is strong. And the Lord of hosts is his name. And he shall thoroughly plead their cause. That he may give rest to the land. And disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. So what does it mean that he may give rest to the land? Meaning those that come from the land. The holy land. Which we made it the holy land. When we placed our name on it. Alright. When we conquered those Philistines and them Canaanites over there. That's when the land became holy. When our foot touched, touched ground on that land, that's when the land became the holy land. All right. And also, as it reads, let me read this again. And the quietest the inhabitants of Babylon. So America, which is what this is talking about. Verse 35, a sword is upon the Chaldean, save the Lord. And upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars. And who were the greatest liars that have ever lived? In demonstrating that, the so-called white man, beginning with the JOOs. And they shall dote, a sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. And what does the word sword indicate? The destruction which is going to come upon them. It's not literally speaking about a sword coming from one end to the earth to the other end of the earth. That don't even make sense. A sword isn't, isn't strong enough to do that. So what is the sword really referring to? The nuclear destruction. All right. And when you look at those missiles, they actually look like swords. Flying swords. All right. A sword is upon the liars and they shall dote. A sword is upon her mighty men and they shall be dismayed. And a sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots and upon all of the mingled people that are in the midst of her. And they shall become as woman, and a sword is upon her treasures, and they shall be robbed. So when you read all the way down, all right, it explains to you that the way that this Babylon is going to be destroyed is going to be destroyed in like manner, as in verse 40 would tell you. Let me read it. As the most sovereign through Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities thereof, save the Lord, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. All right, so this Babylon will be destroyed until there's nothing left of it. And then at, at the same time, no one's ever going to dwell in it from generation to generation. Okay, as uh, verse 39 will put it. So we know that the Babylon that Jeremiah was in, which was in, in Iraq, was not referring to the literal land that he was in or to those people that were ruling, calling themselves the Babylonians. This wasn't a prophecy for them. This was a prophecy for Another Babylon, which revelations would put it, old daughter of Babylon. All right. And the old daughter of Babylon is America. So this Babylon, which we're now under the influence of, will be destroyed in like manner as Sodom and Gomorrah. So all of this is going to come when our Redeemer makes his second return. So when we see this sign here and many other signs in the heavens, which indicate 
something. It can only be but something which is what's spoken of in the New Testament. That the Son of Man is going to come back. Let's read this again. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw of not. Absolutely. Our Redeemer is bound to come. Okay. And that is the Lord, our power. We're not going to redeem ourselves with our own strength. None of that's going to happen. What's going to happen is that the Father on high is going to reclaim his people and demonstrating to his people that this power is going to be the power of the Israelites all around the world. All right. So, um, let me read this right here. We're going to read verse 34, which is the point. Thus said the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah, which is referring to the, the uh, northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, were oppressed together. So in this Babylon, we were oppressed together. All right. All around America, you have all of the tribes. And guess what? When we're dealing with New York, especially, you know, you have the Dominicans, you have the, the so-called Haitians, you have the so-called Puerto Ricans, you have the, you have uh, the so-called American Negro, all right, which came from some of them coming from, um, you know, West Africa and the, and the other half of them coming from um, Europe. And as well as England, just include are all piled in together in them ghettos, oppressed together. OK, and all that took them captives, held them fast, just like. Back in during the time of ancient Egypt, when the Pharaoh wanted to um, not let the people go and they refused to let them go. Right. Because we have been an asset greatly to them. We've made America great. The Israelites, every time the Israelites were, were in captivity under every nation, they put the great in their name. OK. So we're their greatest asset, but the greatest asset will be the Lord's asset. And we're going to go right back to where we belong, which is towards our power in heaven. And we're going to be under his comfort. All right. And their redeemer is strong. Who's going to be the redeemer? Yahweh Shai. And the Lord, Yahweh hosts is his name. And he shall thoroughly plead their cause, meaning he's going to judge their cause. The word Shapat should be there. So now let's look up this word plead. Okay, it's a different word. Ra'ab or Ra'ab. Right. Ra'ab, which is to strive content physically with words to conduct a case or suit, a legal suit to make a complaint to quarrel. So in other words, the Lord is going to fight for his people. Just to simply put it. That's why it also reads, oh yeah, this is the strongest definition over here. Uh, mostly figuratively to wrangle, i.e. hold a controversy. Now, doesn't it also read on Isaiah 34 and verse 8? For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And it's not just going to be Esau that the Lord is going to pay a visit to. It's just it's going to be the, the other nations as well. The other nations are going to get judged too. And this is the reason why the Lord is coming back. One of the reasons anyway. All right. Verse 9. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. And the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become a burning pitch. So this is the prophecy in regards to America. But Isaiah likens it in, unto Basra. All right. So this Basra, which is America, will be destroyed until there's nothing left. As Jeremiah saw in his vision, which was a similitude. Okay. Meaning they, they uh, the prophets have gotten the same similar visions. So there you go. So the solar eclipse is an indication of the Lord's return and what the Lord is going to do unto America. So this individual here, um, Adam, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Berkowitz, he's absolutely correct. However you pronounce his name anyway. So that's all I have to say with this. I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashmi Shai, Bahashem Rekah HaKwadash. And the water Yahweh Bashmi Shine for giving us this truth and this knowledge. Shalom.